So maybe you want to see exactly what this block public access does. And so this is about a this is about a 15 minute demo because I am way too smart to be doing a demo like live on the fly on Twitch. I pre-recorded it, but I'll be here happy to take a Q&A after it. Um, but what I'm showing you here is I'm showing you exactly like it, Black Public Access is a very simple feature to describe. I can describe it in 30 seconds. You turn it on, your data is not public. That wasn't even 30 seconds, right? And but you might, if you're like me, you want to know. Well, okay, all right, what's actually going on here? And so this uh, this demo is going to take you one step deeper. I'm actually going to walk through a whole blocking public access scenario. I'm going to start with a bucket that doesn't have block public access. I'm going to do some public access. And we'll see what happens as I turn on block public access. So I'm going to roll the video now uh, and uh, enjoy. This is a real demo. Hi, day people. I'm going to demo for you block public access in S3. This is our simplest and most powerful data protection feature. I suggest block public access. If you turn it on, then your objects are not public. And that's really all there is to it, uh, just about. So I'm going to show you exactly what that means here. So over here um, in an AWS account that I have, I'm going to call this the blue account because I've named it after the you know pretend blue project that I might be running in this. Uh, in contrast to a red account that I will uh, that I will show you later. Account number begins with one nine eight four. And uh, I have this bucket in here, the block public access demo bucket. Um, this bucket here, um, let's pretend that I created it a while ago, uh, before public block public access became a feature, before the S3 console was encouraging me to turn on block public access. So it, it does not have block public access turned on. It's also created in sort of the original state of an AWS uh, S3 bucket. Um, an S3 bucket is private by default. And what that means is that when you create an S3 bucket, unless you share it with someone outside your account, it's only accessible from within the same account. So I'll show you this bucket. It has one object in it. That's the object we're going to practice reading here. Um, as far as permissions go, well, it's telling me objects can be public. It explains what that means. The bucket is not public because it's private by default. And um, anyone with appropriate permissions can grant public access to objects. This is the default pre-block public access state of an S3 bucket. OK, great. So uh, block public access is off. Like I said, there is no bucket policy. And what that means is that outside this AWS account, um, nobody is able to access this data. I'm going to show that to you. So over here, I have a, a CLI session started up. I'm going to use the who am I command, get caller identity to show you. This is going to be some identity in account 1984 administrator level. So this IAM principal does have access to read this bucket. And so I'm going to try to read that readme.txt that we saw here. And you know we expect this to succeed because uh, the contents were happy pie day. Uh, we expect the contents this to succeed because it's accessed from within the same account. But if I go over here, this is a different account. And you know, you'll notice here that the account here starts with 3120. It's a different account. Nobody ever gave it permission to this bucket, and therefore it doesn't have permission to the bucket. You'll notice that I get a 403 and access denied when I do that. And in fact, if I attempt unauthenticated access, uh, just by doing a curl against, uh, you know, against this bucket to get this object, you know, obviously that will also give me access denied. Um, this bucket is not public. Uh, I have no, you know, as is almost always the case in S3, I don't have a public use case for this bucket. I may wish to share its objects. I'll show you that in a second, but it's not public. I don't want it to be public. And that is why it, along with Probably most of the buckets that you have, if not all, is a great candidate for S3 block public access. Okay, well, let's say I do actually wish to have this red account have access to the bucket. I don't want to make it public, but I have a specific entity I want to share it with. So S3 bucket policies are the way to do that. So we're going to write in a bucket policy for that right now. Okay, so here's how this looks. It's an IAM policy document.
one or more statements. We'll just write one here. Share with red account. Statement ID will give it. Allow. This is how you allow another AWS account. I just got to get their account ID. So it's this 3120 thing here. All right. I just want to give it read access. So that's called S3 colon get object. And for the resource, I'm going to say objects in this bucket. So they're helpful. They give me the bucket error and I can copy paste here. Uh, since get object addresses objects, not the bucket itself, I say slash all the objects. Okay. That's my policy. This is not a public policy statement. It shares with a specific account. In fact, there's a brand new feature here, uh, a tie-in with IAM Access Analyzer, which is worth looking at if you've never seen it before, where the Access Analyzer will preview uh, the access that you just created to this account. All right, it ran over. This, this is using um, it's a pretty sophisticated automated reasoning to understand what I wrote in this bucket policy. So Access Analyzer's understanding of this bucket policy is the uh, is the same as my own understanding of it. This specific account has been given read access through the bucket policy. Great, that's what I intended. So let's go and share this policy. It's still telling me objects can be public, still telling me the bucket's not public, uh, but anybody with permissions could change that. Okay, now, but remember what, uh, what S3 was telling me about this, uh, about this bucket here. It said objects can be public, Anyone with appropriate permissions, that would be me, can grant public access to objects. So since we don't yet have block public access for non, let's actually make this bucket public. Um, like I said, it is very, very rare to have a use case where you would actually want to do this. In fact, even if, you know, it's fairly common to be putting your website assets in S3 uh, for a static website, but even if you did that, um, in the modern era, we would tell you to create a CloudFront distribution, a very low cost way to get the full benefit of our CDN in front of your S3 bucket. And you would put the S3 bucket behind that CloudFront distribution as its origin. And once again, you wouldn't be making your bucket public. You would be granting access specifically to your CloudFront distribution to be able to fetch data from that bucket. Okay, so we're gonna say the bucket policy, everybody, And we'll copy this resource over here, same resource, all objects in the bucket. Okay, uh, once again, uh, back to Access Analyzer. Uh, tell me what you see in this uh, policy here. Huh, it is telling me very prominently, all principles have read access. Um, and that is indeed what I said here, right? So it's gonna show me that, it's interpreting my policy. Now that is indeed what I'm trying to demonstrate here. So I'm gonna save these changes. And you'll notice here that I now start getting a lot of feedback about having made this data public, because once again, we don't think this is common. So uh, it's saying that, uh, that the access is public over here. If I go back to my, uh, if I go back to my list of uh, buckets, it's telling me that it's that it's public. If you see one of these on your buckets, it is, you know, it is well worth going and making sure that uh, you are in fact in one of these very rare use cases where the data would be public rather than shared within a specific entity. But now that I've made the data public, uh, I'm going to go try to make a unauthenticated access to this data again, and it's public. So now I see it. Now. We're here to talk about blocking public access, this straightforward guardrail that prevents anybody, even in the future, from ever uh, from ever changing your S3 bucket so that its data is public. So let's go take this existing bucket. And remember, this bucket is sitting there with a public uh, policy statement on it right now. I'm going to go back to permissions, and I'm going to turn on this block public access. Um, OK, so over here, Block public access. You'll notice that there are four settings here. Uh, almost always, you're going to want to turn on all four. I'm just going to briefly explain what you're looking at here. Um, so there are four uh, four statements over here, kind of two dimensions. Um, one dimension, this is the one we're going to see first, is what should S3 do with policy statements that are already there that are public, like the one that we have. The second one's even more interesting. We'll look at it in just a minute. What should we do about 
new policy statements that someone adds. So, and there are four of these because there's actually another older uh, permission system in S3 called Apples. It does exactly the same thing with Apples as it does with bucket policy. I'm showing you with bucket policy because that's the modern way to share data in S3. Okay, so I'm turning on block public access. It's telling me public access will be blocked because that is indeed what I'm trying to do here. So I'm gonna confirm that. Okay, so let's go. Um, so first of all, the permissions overview, now that I have blocked public access, telling me a different story, only authorized users of this account. Now, if I go and look at the bucket policy, uh, it, nobody's changed, nobody has edited my bucket policy. It's still exactly what I said. But because I've asked it to start blocking public access, and because there's a public policy that was written here, it's now gonna block access from outside the account. Okay, I'll show you. Unauthenticated access fails because I blocked public access. And in fact, access from outside the account also fails because I blocked public access. Okay, but I didn't actually want the uh, I didn't actually want the red account uh, to to not have access. I wanted to share specifically with them. So uh, let me go and I will edit this. I will remove that public policy statement. I want the red uh, account to have access. I don't want the public to have access. Um, I'm just going to remove that, and I'm going to accept those changes. Okay, so now I'm back here sharing specifically with the red account. I'll try it again. Now I still have block public access enabled, but the sharing with the red account is specific. It's not public. It's intentional. Um, so here we are. I have access to that again. And now this, what I'm about to show you now is the real power of block public access, which is that it prevents further changes to your bucket policy or ACLs that would open up public access. Let me show you. We'll go back into this bucket policy. Let's add that statement again. What happens here? Well, think about while I write this public policy statement, see if you can predict what's going to happen when I try to save it. Okay. Allow principle everybody. And we'll just get these two lines from over here. Okay. Uh, this is, as we saw before, this is a public policy statement. Well, let's see what happens when I add it. Oh. I don't get to add it. This is the power of block public access because much, much, much later, someone might come along and be editing the, the bucket policy and you wanna be completely sure that there are no changes that they could make in the future that would cause this data that you know should not be public, that would cause it to be public. So we've just made it impossible to introduce uh, public access statements here. It's telling me access denied. I, can't add a public statement. And just to, you know, just to show you that I do still have the ability to uh, make modifications to non-public parts. Let's say I also decide that uh, that this red account should be able to write, you know, so I'll add another action here. So this is not public, but I can modify the bucket policy. And if I save this, it'll it'll be okay with that. So um, that's really the demo here. It's it's simple because the feature is simple. You turn it on. Public access is blocked both for requests and for further edits to the uh, to the bucket policy. I'll point out just one more thing. I don't have this turned on in this account because obviously I'm demoing uh, turning block public access on or off. But I would recommend over here on the left rail here in the S3 console, block public access settings for this account. You can turn on this setting for your entire account, which means it will affect both the buckets already in there and the buckets that you have yet to create. Uh, for almost all of your workload accounts, this is a great choice. Um, as soon as you create the accounts, turn on block public access for the entire account. It's a set it and forget it. And you're gonna have these public access uh, block protections on all the time. So thank you very much. Hope you have a great rest of Pi Week. Thank you. That was an awesome demo. And again, as someone who personally who hasn't used block storage, my big takeaway there is that previous to that feature, I had all of the tools at my disposal and I could implement that very clear sort of vision that I just want to block public access. But what I saw in that demo is like working backwards from a clear customer use case 
and optimizing the developer experience in the in the form of a feature essentially to just fast track getting to exactly that solution is is that a fair representation that's absolutely right it's a simplifier right if you think about what the state of the world was before this feature like you said all of these tools existed right like you in order to make a bucket public you had to literally make it public like that was the only way to make a bucket public but if you thought about like you know think about particularly working in an enterprise environment where this is data that's very important to you um, in a world without block public access, you might reasonably say, you know what, permission to the ability to write bucket policy because this is an ability that gives you also gives you the ability to make the but the policy public. You know what, I'm not going to give my developers that permission that that ability. I'm going to tightly control it. If they need a bucket policy written, they're going to have to you know tickets or go to the Bureau of Approvers, we're going to put all kinds of friction in their path. That's kind of, you know, that's kind of antithetical to the spirit of agility in the cloud. A feature like this, you know, if you have blocked public access turned on for the whole account, this now puts you in a position where you might be able to get a little more agility. You might be comfortable at this point letting your developers write bucket policies because you know with block public access on for your whole account, if somebody goes and tries to write that statement, I mean, you saw I tried to write a public a public policy statement with um, block public access enabled and it didn't let me. Right. So, you know, that guardrail is there and then, you know, that you're kind of, you know, you're kind of requiring them to have much more specific ways of sharing their data, which, you know, maybe you're OK with. Um, and so what this is, is, is it's really kind of uh, security and agility. And many people think that they're at loggerheads with each other, but there really is a way to square the circle with those to get your cake and eat it too. And it's it's features like this that put the guardrail in place to prevent the thing you actually wanted to prevent. And then you can allow a lot of other things without sort of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So that's, that's really the power of these usable security features. Uh, exactly. And I, and I feel like there's no better way to sort of sign off the segment because we've now come full circle on what we were talking about uh, almost an hour and a half ago, which was that sort of pr in practice, a lot of organizations may be bogged down for being as agile as they want because they don't have the ability to be confident to assess the security of a particular implementation. And with something like block public access, uh, man, I can't think of a better name for uh, a feature right. that, that ties to the value it provides, but this gives you the peace of mind as a developer to be able to move quickly and deploy features while still having security be a priority zero. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You know, we we love this feature because it's a because it's a simplifier that makes it ever easier for customers to just get it right and know they got it right. Yeah. Well, uh, I see that in the back room we have our next guest coming on. But before we we sign off, Becky, a huge thank you, real MVP oh, here. Thank you. Fireside chat, two back-to-back -back mocks, uh, lots of praise from the Twitch chat. They they all say you make it look easy, and I, I can't agree more. So, Becky, thank you again for joining us here for Pi Week. Thank you so much, Nick. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your security day here. <laughs>